Hello and welcome, this is Rufalmonger. And my friends, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some of the most popular characters in fighting game history, just throughout the world at large. But the thing with a lot of these mega popular characters have tons of followers, tons of fan art dedicated to them, all that kind of stuff. Despite how popular they are, no one actually plays them. So the most recent example I can give in current FGC timeline here is have you ever heard the phrase, I'm a bike and main? You know what? There's lots of people that say they're bike and mains. In fact, there's a whole trend on Twitter and all that kind of stuff for uh, Guilty Gear Stripe posts. They'll say no bike and no buy. Ken. So wow, these people must be really dedicated to their main, right? Like they won't even buy the game if that character is not showing up? Well, sadly, the truth is a lot more basic than that. The thing about so-called bike and mains is there's more bike and mains out there than people who have ever actually played Guilty Gear overall. So where are all these people coming from that say they're bike and mains that never actually played Guilty Gear or played bike and? Well, the thing is, there's two big reasons about that. And that's kind of the crux of this video. The very odd phenomenon of the fighting game sex appeal characters that gain so much popularity and then draw so many people in, and then they're too weird and hard to use for all the people that they had just brought into the game. You would think these kind of characters being as popular as they are and bringing in the audience they are, they should be very easy to use so these people can translate to the fighting game very easily, but no, they're actually, for the most part, a lot harder than the other normal characters. So we're gonna use three franchises here, three case examples, Baiken from Guilty Gear, Jury from Street Fighter, and Angel from King of Fighters. So let's start with Baiken. So for Baiken, the appeal is obvious, right? Besides the sex appeal stuff, there's definitely a badass element to the character. Grizzled samurai veteran eye patch uses a bunch of unconventional weapons because Baiken's also an amputee. So in place of the other arm, all sorts of like traps and knives, swords, all that kind of stuff, right? And even just the way Baiken moves around, you can see how Baiken has got a lot of fans. And just on the surface, hey, Baiken is pretty cool, right? Like, look at something like this. This is uh, Baiken's instant kill. And you get kind of the samurai classic, if you will, right? Doing the cool samurai thing of the opponent and everything gets slashed after you do your neat little pose. And all the opportunities Baiken gets to give you an eyeful, well, I guess that's just an added bonus, right? So sure, fair enough, Baiken attracting a fan base, easy to understand. Okay, so you just won over your audience, a lot of people just bought the game, let's play Baiken, and oh no. Baiken's a weird defensive character. And I can tell you for a fact, people are new to the fighting games, defense is the last thing they care about. Uh, having to worry about active defense, active counters, all that kind of stuff, that is not why they came to the dance. The average new fighting game player just wants to attack, 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 and Baiken is very specifically not that. In fact, in older games like the X2 series, Baiken's uh, defensive measures are even crazier because she pulls off specific counter moves from blocking. So uh, at least in the Exard series, it's a little bit more active that you have like an actual counter to do, but still, it's all about defense and new players don't want that. Now, it's one of those things where if you're willing to learn, sure, whatever, absolutely, that is great, right? But we got a whole audience looking for one thing, and when they get in, they're in for a rude awakening for what the character actually is. That said, Baiken, of the three characters we've chosen, is the least offensive in that regard. It's just basically defensive character versus offensive character. So let's go to Jury. So to me, Jury is the person that exemplifies this whole ultra popular sex appeal character that no one actually plays. Heck, they had a contest not too long ago that had new costumes in the Street Fighter and Jury won both the slots. So both new costumes went to Jury. Jury has been Omega level popular ever since she came out in Street Fighter 4. But the thing is here, she's so weird compared to the average Street Fighter 4 character, no one played her despite how popular she was. And why is that? Because Jury is a weird negative edge character, meaning she does her move, 
But the move, the second part, you can delay it and store it if you hold the button down. So you ideally in Street Fighter 4 never, almost never anyways, want to do the move right away. You just want to do the kick, wait for it, hold it, and then release it at a later time. And the thing is here, me, myself, at this rate, I have been playing fighting games for 30 years now. So a fair chunk of time, right? And I hate Negative Edge. Me, the guy who's been doing this all his life, right? And if I hate Negative Edge, what on earth is a person who's brand new to the game gonna think about it? Wow, Jury's so cool and sexy, can't wait to play. And then, wait a second, how do you play her? And the whole feng shui engine thing where she gets to break the rules of Street Fighter and becomes like dial a button combos like Darkstalkers or something, uh, that didn't help matters either. What about Street Fighter V? They definitely made her easier to use, but she's still weird, hard, and complex to the average character. So now, instead of having to hold the button for Negative Edge to store the move after you do your Fuha kick, you basically bank the move, and then the next time you do the same motion, then the store will come out, compared to Street Fighter IV, where it came out exactly when you let go of the button. So it's easier to understand, I guess, but still, it's a weird mechanic for what it is. Uh, no one else in the game really has to do stuff like that. Uh, just to do basic special moves, because these moves are not anything to write home about. Uh, she still has Feng Shui Engine, which is still weird because it breaks a lot of the rules of the game, unless they're chain normals together, which is not a normal Street Fighter thing in the way it is done. So in the end, she's still weird and hard to use. Jury is ultra popular everywhere but the actual game itself. Even with a new patch and she won the popularity contest with the new costumes and won both slots for new costumes, Jury is still very middle of the road. And that's right now. That's with new patch shininess and new costumes. You go back earlier months, she falls down even further. So once again, just a weird example of character is way too hard to use for the kind of people they're bringing in, and maybe a character like this should be easier to use. Not saying there shouldn't be hard characters, because there should, but maybe not this one. And now let's move on to On Hell, because I feel she's the most extreme example of everyone shown here. So KOF definitely has a lot of characters like this. Uh, a very popular example would be Vanessa. Vanessa definitely has a lot of fans, and when you actually get in and play her and learn what she's all about, she has combos so long, it would make a Dragon Ball Fighter's character blush. But for Angel, uh, very easy to see why she's popular, right? Well, you see, I just like Angel Sama so much because of the deep lore of the character. And you know what? She's got other selling points too. Hey, do you like pro wrestling? Do you like The Rock? On Hell literally has the people's elbow as one of her main moves. So straight up, just like the rock. Heck, in King of Fighters 14, she gives you like an Omega Rock bottom before giving you the people's elbow. So hey, that's cool. And SNK knows what they're doing with this character and that she's the big fan service character, right? Uh, as this super would show, <laughs> pretty obviously. Okay, so she's got this sexy look, and you know what? The rock stuff? Cool, awesome. Now strap in, because you're about to learn about one of the single most complex fighting game characters of all time. So on Hell, in the game she has what we call the Unchain system. Now, if you're familiar with fighting games at all, you might have heard something called the Rekkas, right? Uh, very famously from Street Fighter, the character Fei Long invented the concept, but you'll find Rekkas everywhere, right? Even modern games like Dragon Ball Fighters have Rekkas to some degree. And what you could say uh, for On Hell is she has Rekkas on horse steroids. So welcome to the Unchained system. What is the Unchained system? Well, like a Rekka, it is three parts except each one of the three parts is fully unique from each other and they have multiple options. So this is where you start. This is the first thing. And as you can see here, there's five options. From there, we go to Unchained Circle, which is six options. And then we have Unchained Feints, which is a bonus like mid-layer thing. You don't have to do the feint. And then you have the Unchained Finishes. So if you want to go Unchained Circle and the Unchained Start and the Unchained Finish really quick, 
Wow, okay, that doesn't look like much, right? But it's just so much more complex than that. So for our starting Unchain, we have five options. Each one of these five options can go into Layer 2. Layer 2 has six options, and the thing about Layer 2 is any of those six options can go into other Layer 2 options. So we'll use Back Forward Kick. That's our Layer 1 starter, right? So Back Forward Kick into Up Punch is Layer 2 now, but then we can go from Up Punch into, say, Forward Kick, and we're still on Layer 2. Now let's try this. So we'll go Back Forward Kick into Up Punch, so Layer 2, into Down Kick, into Forward Punch, so once again, we're still on Layer 2, And then we'll go into one of our enders. So that wasn't a true combo. There's a couple resets there, but hey, that's the point sometimes. Heck, one of the enders is a reset teleport that switches sides. So yeah, there's just so much you can do. Like the starters, any one of these starts off the whole Unchained thing. So you get a low, you get an overhead, you get this multi-hitting kick, you get this move here, big old gut punch. And, uh, and 14 anyways, it also doubles as a guard break. Uh, and you get a teleport side switch. You can do whenever you want. And during the run, you can go into layer two whenever you want. So yeah. And layer two has all of its craziness. And then there's layer 2.5, I guess you could say, where you just like can faint and dash away or dash in or whatever. And then you have the enders, which are usually like big FU punches or FU hits. So those are pretty cool. That's a wall bounce combo starter as well. So to learn this character, you have to learn so much more. You have to learn like multiple characters worth of tech just to understand this one character. Almost everyone who comes in on hell saying, wow, the cool sexy character I want to play her. I'm going to say she probably has something like a 99% rate of people bouncing off her. So now with these showcases here and it's all said and done, what is the lesson to be learned here? Well, I guess it is simply put this. If you're designing a character you know will bring in a certain element and you're looking to sell your game, right? Maybe don't make those characters that bring in that audience some of the harder or hardest characters in the game. Fighting game characters obviously run the gamut from, you know, easy to ultra advanced, right? And absolutely, that is 100% the way it should be. But for the characters that are obviously going to be the fan favorites and going into the design process, you know they're going to be fan favorites. Maybe make those the easier characters. The characters are going to be less popular anyways. Make those the actually hard characters to play. I don't know. From my point of view, I'm thinking of it from a marketing perspective, right? You get people willing to come into the ecosystem, and as soon as they touch the character, they're scared away because they're too hard for them. So that all said, that's my ranting and raving on the subject, I guess. So I'm going to put it to you now, future bike in Maine. What do you think about this whole subject? Am I crazy, or is there something there? So post in the comments below. And other than that, I guess we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And hey, go out and play some fighting games.